positive feedback loops for geoscience. There are a lot of videos online about biology, this one specifically focusing on earth science. Let's take a look. So what is a positive feedback loop? Positive feedback loop, something that amplifies a change by causing something to further increase or decrease. Now it says nothing about whether it's good or bad, as we'll see later in the video, it doesn't matter. What a positive feedback loop look like? Well, I can definitely say you have seen a positive feedback loop in your everyday life before. I'm sure everyone's seen something like this, fire. So fi fire is definitely a positive feedback loop. And here is why. Let's take a look at a quick video. So as you saw, the flame started out slow. And as it warmed up the paper around it, it caught more paper on fire and sped up the reaction. And as that caught more paper on fire, it made more heat and allowed more paper to catch on fire. Now, obviously, feedback loops don't last forever. Now, let's look at another example you might have seen other than fire. Maybe you've had a speaker and a microphone that were too close to each other. And maybe you heard a feedback noise or something like that. Something similar to this. So that's called audio feedback noise, and it, it's also a feedback loop. So let's say you've got a speaker, and it's a little too close to the microphone, even if the speaker isn't that loud. And then uh, that microphone receives more sound and sends more volume to the speaker, which then increases the amount of speaker volume going to the microphone, and then increases it even more, and so on. You can see the feedback loop increases the volume each time. Now, let's talk about why you should care. So we know what they are now. Why should you care? Well, you're actually alive because of feedback loops. So right now, as you're watching this, your body is maintaining its temperature with feedback loops, and it's also allowing the cells in your body to be able to, let's just call it move. Your heart beats, your lung moving. It's all because of the little ions, and those are all controlled by feedback loops. Now, you're probably watching this on a device that has a battery, because most of us are, and when you charge that device, how do you know it's uncharged? How does the phone know to stop charging? Well, that's another feedback loop. So as your phone charges, the voltage increases, and the phone will slow down as charging. At least newer phones will. As it gets higher and higher, the voltage gets lower and lower, and when it reaches maximum voltage, it actually stops charging. So that's a positive feedback loop, at least till you reach the end, even though it's reducing the amount of charging. But uh, what about Earth science? So let's focus on the Earth for a second. At least for my students, you live in a desert biome. Now, our desert biome, or climate, is actually caused by feedback loops. Feedback loops between humidity, temperature, and water. Let's get to our next example of a feedback loop in geoscience that you've probably experienced before, at least if you live in this region, and that would be drought. So water is a pretty scarce resource here in the southwest. Every drop is a precious resource. So even a small increase in temperature, which means that more of it evaporates, or a decrease in rain can have some seriously big effects on not just natural vegetation, but as well as human water supplies. So for the last 20 years or so, we've been in a drought, moderate to severe, just depends on the year. And uh, what do you think a drought would do if it continued for a couple of years? What would that cause? So what do you think would go in the next box? Think about that for a second. So this one was actually pretty easy. A drought would actually just make the ground drier. Nothing complicated about that. Less rain means less water in the ground. So that can lead to something else. It means less water in the ground. You've got less plants. So over here, you can see an example of what less plants would look like. There are less number of plants, and the plants that are in this drier area are also smaller and have less leaves versus this area over here. You can see not only are there more plants, but they're also bigger and have more leaves on them. So more or less plants would mean less plants are giving off water, or the plants that are there are giving off less water because they're smaller. But uh, here's a question. So we have less plants, and they're putting out less water. How could that affect climate? I mean, what does plants have to do with, you know, the air, wind, water, rain, that kind of stuff? Well, believe it or not, I'll give you a second to think about this one. Believe it or not, that would actually mean there's less water in the air itself. So the plants are a significant source of water in the air. So if they're releasing less of it, normally that moisture would go up in the air, make some clouds and rain. But without it, there's less clouds and rain. And if there's less clouds and rain, you guessed it, there's drought. Because drought is less rain. Now, if we think about it, feedback loops don't always have to be 
like this. They don't have to be something negative. They don't have to be bad things. Let's change one thing about our feedback loop and see if we can change it to be something positive. So let's say some farmers come in, they begin irrigating their land. That means they're adding water to their crops. What do you think that would change on this chart? You might have already seen it. Right here, it would change the ground moisture from reduced to increased. So there'd be more moisture in the ground because they're watering their crops. So if there's more crops, because it increased, you have increased vegetation. And if there's more vegetation, that means there's more transpiration, more plants are putting out water. And if there's more plants putting out water, you're gonna have more water vapor in there. I think you're, you're probably seeing a trend here at this point, which means there's more clouds and rain. And if there's more clouds and rain, you actually end up with more rainfall or at least normal rainfall. So the drought's over. But uh, what do you think, what's, what's one thing that could break this loop? So take it a second to think. What's something in here that would actually cause this loop to break apart and not continue? Because normally you would have normal rain or above average rain, which would lead to more moisture, more vegetation, more transpiration, and would just increase exponentially. And obviously that's not going to happen. So hopefully you thought about it for a second. You can say it now if you're in my class. If not, I'll say it now too. One example I would like to bring up is wind. Now wind isn't anywhere in here, but this is a simplified example. So this would work great in a sealed glass jar or a dome, like a biodome, where no air could escape. But in real life, wind's going to carry away this water vapor in the air right here. So instead of being more water vapor, it would actually be more water vapor somewhere else on Earth. And you would end up with still less rain and still drought in this particular region. Now, it could spread eventually, but not where we are. Now, there are locations on Earth where this a wind doesn't come into play. So the Amazon rainforest more water vapor goes in the air, the wind doesn't carry it away. It gets trapped by the Andes Mountains. So this is what happens in an Amazon rainforest or other rainforest when wind doesn't take up any effect. It just keeps increasing, increasing. You have a whole bunch of plants and vegetation. Now, let's go ahead and move on from there. Let's do one more example question. So take a minute. If you're working in my class, write this down on your paper. Is this a positive feedback loop or a negative feedback loop? So positive, something that increases more of itself, or negative, something that reduces itself over time. So take a second to think about that. All right, did you get it? It was actually positive. Now, I'm hoping most of you got that, which means I was good at teaching, but if not, a good rule is if you see these arrows and they lead back on themselves, so if they almost form like a circle of arrows, you've got a positive feedback loop. Let's go ahead and summarize this up. So, summary. What is a positive feedback loop? Something that amplifies a system causing a further increase or decrease. And for Earth, it can affect Earth's local and global weather or climate. It can affect both, and it does. So. Try out, try out one of your own. See if you can come up with your own positive feedback loop now. So here's a few tips you can think about when you're coming up with your own positive feedback loop. It can involve humans. In fact, a lot of feedback loops do involve humans. So that's a quick hint. Think about that. A lot of humans do things to the Earth. Usually long-term time scales, so think years. At the bare minimum, our drought example is going to take a couple of years but they can also go up to thousands or even millions of years if you're talking plate tectonics. Hint, hint. And lastly, a lot of feedback loops involve the water cycle. You'll see that both of my examples and my question involve water. So think about the water cycle or something at least with water in there. Anyway, that's positive feedback loop.